The key to growing into the best version of yourself is making peace with all of the versions that existed before. So much of the time we are haunted by our past mistakes and it literally leaves us stagnant on our self-development journeys. It's actually the first step you need to do in actually becoming the best version of yourself but so many people skip it and they're like, okay, but how do I be confident and how do I have a glow up and how do I have a career shift? No, you need to make peace with your past so that you can flourish in your present and actually plan in your best ability efficiently for your future. A lot of the time, our past mistakes and our shame and our guilt that we harbor is actually reducing our confidence and our self-love which is then affecting our ability to go after the opportunities that are meant for us because we hold ourselves back and in this video I'm going to teach you how you can forgive yourself so that you can move on and live your best life as always here are the video chapters don't forget that my self-help podcast with exclusive content is linked below in the description as well as my book that is coming out in August is available to pre-order now so click the link in the description to pre-order it remember that I also have a second YouTube channel where you can can see my day in the life vlogs, my routines, how I stay productive. I actually, before I turned this camera on, filmed a whole personal Q&A life update where I spilled the tea on my life, my relationship, my family, my goals. So you guys can learn more about me over there. But before we get into the video, I want to say a big thank you to Ritual for sponsoring this video. Ritual is a supplement brand that I've been using for almost a year now and these supplements differ from your usual ones, trust me. All of the supplements offer high quality nutrients to fill any nutrient gap and make living a healthier lifestyle so much easier. My favorite part about Ritual Supplements is that it supports gut health. If you wanna glow up, you need to make sure that your gut health is right. I'm currently using Ritual's Symbiotic Plus Supplement, which actually offers a prebiotic, probiotic, and postbiotic. And I've never seen any supplement being able to offer all three of those. I really love Ritual as a supplement brand because they really prioritize your convenience. It gets delivered straight to your door and then you have all of the nutrients that you need in one bottle. And each of these capsules are designed with a delayed release technology so these supplements and these nutrients actually reach your colon not your stomach if you have no idea what i'm talking about prebiotics support the growth and activity of beneficial bacteria within your gut which will then support gut health probiotics relieve things like bloating and gas and then the postbiotic in the same capsule supports your gut barrier function i've been taking supplements for years of my life probably almost a decade and i found that ritual is the cleanest option ritual is vegan gluten-free has no no artificial coloring and they make every supplier and ingredient clear so you know exactly what you're consuming. Another one of my favorite parts of this brand is that you can take these supplements on an empty stomach which is so useful for when I'm on the go sometimes I don't eat breakfast and then I forget to take my supplements and before you know it, it's been a week and I haven't taken any of my supplements so this is so so easy for those of you who live a busy lifestyle so if you're ready to give your body its best shot by not only eating healthy and doing your exercise but adding these supplements into the mix to make sure that you're living as your healthier self then you can check out ritual via the link in my description chapter number one the importance of self-forgiveness I want to use this chapter to tell you why you should even care about all of the advice I'm about to give in chapter two and three. So fact number one is, do you really think it's honorable for you to be holding on to all of this shame? I know what you feel, you're like, okay, I hurt this person or I messed up in this instance or I shouldn't have done this. So you're kind of punishing yourself in a way and feeling like you're making up for the mistake you did by holding in all of this resentment, right? And shame and guilt. But what you don't realize is when you hold on to all of those negative feelings consistently, you are now living as an unhealed human. You are not progressing in your life. You are holding on to negative feelings, meaning you are vibrating at a lower level and therefore you are going through life as a human who is then more prone to projecting, to harboring even more negative feelings. You are gonna be more likely to form into someone who is a hater, who is jealous, who doesn't know how to be a good friend or a partner because they haven't even dealt with themselves yet. When you can't love and forgive yourself, your capacity to show up for other people is also gonna be capped. So you're literally just shooting yourself in the foot and you're continuing to self-sabotage you, everyone around you, and your life. This leads me onto point number two, the vibrational chart of energy. If you've been here for a while, then you've seen me talk about this a lot. Now here's the thing, when you don't forgive yourself, you are operating at a vibration of shame, which is a vibrational frequency of 20 out of 700 plus that you could be experiencing. Now, here's what the vibrational chart doesn't show. 20 is shame, right? Which is the lowest level of consciousness that you could be experiencing. Underneath shame is the vibrational frequency of zero. 
Do you know what zero is? Is death. You are going through life at your literal lowest point, and I'm sorry, but you're doing it voluntarily because you can choose to try and move on. You are not doing yourself any favors by holding on to all of these grudges that you have towards yourself. You are impacting your entire life as a result. I understand that healing is hard. I understand that forgiving yourself is hard, and that's why all of the advice to come is gonna be so necessary, but even if you move up to the vibrational frequency of courage right here in the middle, which is just gathering up the strength to try to move past that feeling, to try to think a different way is way better. Step number three, forgiving yourself is so important because when you are harboring these feelings of shame and guilt, your confidence is impacted as a result. Your confidence is gonna be so much lower and your entire life is actually gonna be brought to a halt because you are not going to allow yourself to actually try new things, to go out there because you're so much in the mindset of punishing yourself and holding yourself back. You don't think you're worthy enough. You think you're gonna mess up in that friendship. You don't think that person's gonna like you. You don't trust yourself to date or to be in that room or to talk to those people. So you can't even progress in your life, you can't develop. You are so busy living in the past that you can't even bring yourself to fully immerse yourself and experience the joy that you have in your present. Fact number four, your self-love simply won't exist. If you think that you can still have a little bit of guilt for a mistake you did a couple of years ago, but you know, I'm still confident, I'm still out here doing my career, I'm making friends, your self-love is gonna be capped you will then be going through life as a type of person who doesn't like themselves. You might think you do, but you haven't even reached your full potential of what it could take to love yourself because you still have this little bit of guilt in the back of your head that is holding you back. You are then way more susceptible to having a negative self-talk, to self-doubting, to holding yourself back, to projecting onto other people, to sabotaging all of the future relationships you could have because you haven't learned to love yourself first. You will also be more susceptible to getting into the wrong relationship thinking it's the right one because you haven't come to terms with yourself yet because you haven't been able to set yourself up with the right standard so when someone comes along and they just love you and they accept you you take that as great let's be in a relationship without realizing that your worth and your self love is so high that you can observe everything else about them to see if they're even worthy of a place in your life but when you don't see yourself as the prize and when you don't see yourself as this amazing worthy person who can set all of these standards because they forgive themselves and they're full of love you are going to be surrounded with the people that are wrong for you and you're going to settle for your circumstances. And finally, fact number five, our emotions can affect our physical health. Harboring negative emotions then leads to reactions in the brain which release particular hormones and chemicals, which then in turn affect our actual physical health. Everything is connected. Everything is stored within the body. It's not just a thought that you're thinking. You're literally putting your entire body under emotional stress. And this is why you can actually get physically sick when your mind is under stress. And those are all the reasons why it's so important to forgive yourself. I hope those few facts have given you some motivation and have opened up your ears for all of the advice that is about to come. So let's get into it. Chapter number two, mindset shifts. The first one is, of course you made that mistake. In fact, there's no way you could have avoided doing that thing you feel so guilty about. Your entire life journey influenced you in a way where you had to make that mistake. Your entire life path was leading you up to doing that thing. It was unavoidable, it was inevitable. You can't judge yourself for doing that thing because if another person had lived your entire life and be had been in your shoes and been in your head, they would have done the exact same thing. So don't start beating yourself up thinking, I can't believe I did this and nobody else would have. And Everyone else is judging me for doing that thing. They would have done the same thing. Sometimes we act based on an incorrect mindset that we were given growing up or in whatever circumstances or lifestyle we had. And we have developed a lot of the time negative coping mechanisms along the way which influences us to make the wrong decisions sometimes. Everything is interlinked, okay? We are in survival mode based on other things and other traumas and lessons that we are trying to fight through because of the life that we've been on. We are so busy battling our own inner demons and our insecurities that that is what causes us to act up and make these mistakes in the first place. So remember that. You're not out here hurting people on purpose. You are just learning as you live. And everyone else is doing the exact same thing, which is why everyone's judgments of you are so invalid. But it's so good. This process is so important because making these mistakes and realizing you messed up allows you to do some self-reflection, which then allows you to come to terms with the wounded energy that you were holding, the limited mindset, the negative coping mechanisms that were actually self-sabotage that you never would have realized before. And now you realize them and you can work on them and then the rest of your life is better as a result. This leads me on to step number two, 
why are you holding yourself to this impossible standard that all of a sudden you are flawed just for making mistakes everyone makes mistakes everyone messes up everyone goes through failures everyone hurts other people unintentionally it's a part of life because everyone's busy learning about themselves this is your first time going through life you don't think that you're accidentally gonna get on someone's nerves or hurt them or do someone wrong how are you supposed to know until you make the mistakes to be able to learn about how you're supposed to be and how to be considerate of other people's feelings I've made so many mistakes in the past I've messed so many things up and I am the way I am now and I have the amazing friendships I do now because I've learned from the mistakes I've made in the past I think the trickiest part of dealing with self forgiveness is when other people try and make out that you're a villain and unfortunately this is just a part of life that people love to vilify others and it's such BS because you're really acting like you're perfect and you've never messed up you've never disrespected someone you've never gone behind someone's back you've never done some gossiping and then felt bad after everyone's done something up and even if miraculously you haven't and you're such an amazing person I promise you you're going to end up making a mistake you know people love to jump to this conclusion of oh that could never be me I promise you it could be you you just don't know it yet and I think it's so funny how people try and make up that they're so perfect and try and beat other people down and it's like you're still at the start of your journey you don't know how life is gonna end up humbling you and what things you're gonna have to make mistakes through and fail in order to learn and get on the correct life path and learn how to be the best version of yourself and also just remember if anybody is trying to make you feel bad for something you did even though you're already harboring all of this shame and guilt towards yourself it says a lot more about them than it says about you okay their judgment of you does not equate to how big your mistake was or how bad of a person you are. It actually just goes to show how involved they are in your life, how keen they are to spread negative energy onto you that they can't even practice a little bit of compassion. And hey, even if they don't like what you did, do you know how easy it is to just keep your mouth shut and focus on your own life? Do you know how easy that is? Mindset shift number three, you are not your past mistakes because your past does not exist. You are not who you were yesterday, so why are you using yesterday to form how you feel about yourself today? It doesn't make any sense, okay? Yesterday literally does not exist. You have so much opportunity for today. You have so much power to create the kind of person you wanna be, the kind of life you wanna to live today, and yet you are still living in a time that is done, It's complete. There's no way you can turn back in time to change it, and yet you are sacrificing your future and all the power you have in the present to keep replaying what's happened in the past and what's already been done so that you just prolong the process of living in a place that doesn't even exist anymore it's not even real i choose to wake up every single day as a new person because why would i choose any other different path it's a new day new opportunities i can't go back to change what happened in the past so why would i identify as who i was in the past i'm always trying to be one percent better than i was yesterday so why would i associate myself with who i was yesterday when i'm trying to outdo her I'm trying to do better. If you wake up every single day and you are so attached to the past and reminiscing and looking back on photos and thinking about what you did, you are going to have baggage all of the time. I choose to wake up in a way where it's like, every single day of my life gets better because I wake up with all of this knowledge and wisdom every single day, which comes from having lived more life every single day, but I don't have any baggage, which then holds me back. I want you to think about who you would be if you woke up into today, if it was the first day of your life and you had no past mistakes, no guilt, no shame. You would carry yourself a lot differently. You would be more confident. You would go after things. Why are you preventing yourself from having that experience? Five, you are not your mistakes because you are not your actions. Your actions do not define you. A lot of the time we end up taking actions which don't align with our beliefs and our values, which is why we end up feeling so guilty about them. If our actions could accurately define us, we would never feel guilt or shame around them because it would then accurately reflect everything we feel and everything we believe. Sometimes there's a mismatch, but what actually defines you is the thoughts you have about things, the way that you want to improve, the way that you want to change, the way that you learn from your lessons, the way that you identify, hey, I did this and maybe I shouldn't have that shows who you actually are and what you want to be and how you want to show up in the world and how you want to treat other people you feel guilty because you've gone against your own moral compass and your own belief system and those two things are who you really are as long as you focus on those two things and you're trying to work on them and improve them you're good to go it's fine this leads us on to six you are supposed to make mistakes and if you're not I'm actually heavily concerned for you. Mistakes are always, 100% of the time, an opportunity to grow and become a better person. For example, I used to have the very terrible habit of chasing male validation. It was something I harbored a lot of guilt about. I felt so ashamed of myself. I really didn't like myself because I was doing it. I made some terrible mistakes because I had that desire and I felt so guilty about it, but hold up a second. Making those mistakes made me come up with the idea to have an entire year alone. 
and to learn about self-love and growth. Learning about all of that information then influenced me to get on YouTube, talk about it and help others progress in their self-growth journeys. Doing that for the last year now has me publishing an entire book about self-love based on all of the mistakes I made in the past on how I grew from them and how you can avoid them too. Imagine I didn't make the mistake in the first place. Imagine my life was so easy and so perfect. You think I'd have anything to offer to you right now? I promise you I wouldn't. You think I would be about to be a published author right now? No. Seven. As for forgiving yourself in terms of, I was so stupid for doing that. I was naive. How didn't I see the signs? I tolerated that for too long. Why did I keep going back to them? That's how you learn. I have so many personal stories on why this is true. But recently I had a friend who came to me and she was really upset because she didn't realize that someone really close to her was a narcissist and had been manipulating my friend for a long time. And my friend eventually cut her off and then she was just feeling bad about herself. And she was like, I can't believe I didn't spot the signs and I let this go on for so long like how could I have been so stupid essentially that's how she felt and all I said to her was how are you supposed to know how are you supposed to see the signs when you've never gone through that experience before this is literally your first time going through life why would you expect yourself to know all of the answers in fact now that you've gone through that experience at this age and you've actually learned from you've done the self-reflection you actually were able to cut the person off in the end are you ever gonna go through that experience again no because you learned from it from going through that experience, that means you are now protected for the rest of your life from going through it again. Making mistakes is always a blessing. It always widens your knowledge and allows you to become a better, more developed and more protected person. Value it. Like, yes, I was stupid. Yes, I stayed for too long. I ran back to my ex a couple of times, but am I ever gonna make that mistake again? No, because I know how that ends now. I fully went through that entire experience and it has molded me into the person I am today. Thank you for that experience. Mindset shift number eight. You hating yourself because you did something wrong is not giving self-love. It really isn't. Imagine if you met your younger self and you told them that's how you speak about yourself now. That's how you feel about yourself on a daily basis. That you give yourself that much judgment and that much shame. Imagine. That kid, that younger version of you is still inside of you. It's called your inner child. And you, all of this judgment, and all of this shame and guilt is basically directed at them every single time you decide to engage in it. You have to love yourself enough to be able to work through it. It's a much more productive use of your time and energy because sitting around feeling sorry for yourself and feeling bad because you shouldn't have done something and it was super out of character and oh my God, I can't believe I did that is self-sabotage. You're not even fixing the mistake. You're just being really effing mean to yourself for no reason. I'm at a point in my life where my entire lifestyle is centered around self-love. I buy myself flowers, I take myself on dates, I'm so nice to myself. If I were to mess up, oh my god, it's so out of character for me to be mean to myself and beat myself up about it. I don't deserve that. My inner child doesn't deserve that. I know what's in my control and what's in my best interest and what's going to raise my vibration and that is trying to work through the mistake, figuring out how I can self-reflect to avoid making it again, learning how to fix it if I've hurt someone's feelings, how can I communicate, how can I solve that problem. That way I'm doing much better for myself, my growth, the world, other people in my life. And the last mindset shift is your mistakes are necessary redirections. Now, before I go into this, remember, I am not justifying hurting other people's feelings or doing wrong things, okay? Of course, it's always important to recognize it, build up self-awareness and improve it. However, if something happened to the point where you lost a friend because of it, you broke up with someone, you lost a job, whatever, it was not meant for you in the first place. You were actually meant to make that mistake to lose that person. Because you know when you go through life and someone like does you wrong or disrespects you or you get into an argument with someone and then you have to cut someone off, sometimes the person being cut off is you. Sometimes you're the one that's in the wrong, but the same principle applies, which is they were never meant for you, which is why that bond had to come to an end. It fulfilled its timeline. Not every relationship, not every bond, not every experience is meant to last forever. It came to its end and then someone had to make a mistake or someone had to get into an argument for it to fully exit your life so then you can be redirected onto the next phase of your journey. I believe that the universe just separates us from things sometimes in the strangest of ways like that because we cling so hard onto the things that we want because we don't know if they're actually good for us. And before you jump to a person or an environment or a situation's defense thinking, no, I would have loved to have that or no, they were a really good person, blah, blah, blah. You are not in that situation anymore because you have no idea how it would have ended. Even if it was so good, even if you love the idea of it, you don't know what would have happened if you were to continue on that path or if you were to get that thing. I promise you, because if you were meant to have it, I promise you would have it. 
nothing that is meant for you is going to miss you. Life is not against you. Life is not trying to make things harder for you and push opportunities away from you. Life is trying to give you what you are meant for, what aligns to who you are and what your life path is. And sometimes you go out chasing things that are meant for you because after all, how are you supposed to know what's meant for you, right? You don't know. But I believe there is a greater power that leads us to who we were always supposed to be. Like, don't you ever look at your life and think, oh wow, I get now why I was interested in that as a kid because that's why I have what I have now. I just didn't know it at the time. But I feel like we are always being guided to what we are meant for because we don't know what we're supposed to go and get. So we have all these redirections and we have fallings out and we get rejected from jobs and things to have what we're supposed to have. And in the end, it's always gonna be good and it's always gonna be a happy ending. It's just the journey to get to that happy ending can be a rocky one, but that's also necessary because that's how you learn and that's how you grow. And that's how you build emotional intelligence and emotional resilience and that's how you get stronger. So please have some trust in your journey because it will make your life a whole lot easier. And lastly, chapter number three. These are actionable steps you can do now and ways in which you can live and habits that you can start to actually practice, physically practice forgiving yourself. There's no homework chapter in this, because I feel like this doubles as a homework chapter, things that you can start ASAP to start implementing this advice. Step number one is of course shadow work. This goes without saying. Shadow work is so necessary for self-forgiveness. The two just go together. And with shadow work, I think it's really important to come to terms with the parts of yourself that you dislike. And this includes not only the parts of yourself, but also the emotions that you're harboring. The reason that you hold up and you continue to feel all of this guilt and shame is because you have not let it go. When you let yourself feel something and talk about it and vent about it and write about it, there's none of it left to experience because you've let it go you've expressed it all i think a really useful way to practice this is whatever you're feeling shame about or something that maybe you just struggle with i do this when i have something i fear let's say my fear is i'm super hesitant to meet new people so i take that phrase and then i have to keep asking why until i get to the root of it and the same goes for whatever you're harboring guilt or shame about i feel hesitant to meet people why because what if they hurt me or what if it goes in a way where it has in the past? Why are you putting this narrative to people that you haven't even met yet? Because I fear getting into the wrong situations and offering people my time and energy. Oh, okay, why? And then you keep going and going and going. Did you see how I went from thinking, oh, this is just a belief of mine, like, oh, I just don't like doing that to, oh, actually, this is a wounded part of me that I need to heal because it's holding me back. Two, set yourself goals based on your triggers. For example, let's say you lost your temper, you got super angry and you disrespected your parents and now you're feeling really bad about it. Your goal now is to learn about anger management, to learn about emotional intelligence. I have an entire video on emotional intelligence on my YouTube channel. You are now gonna commit yourself to the practice of choosing when to feel your emotions and not letting your emotions have control over you. That is a very real thing. You get to decide what reactions you have to something and how you feel about something. Hell, one of your actions could even be to keep a swear jar if that's necessary, but this is what allows you to use your mistakes to your benefit so that it levels you up as a human being with everyone that you make. That way, every single mistake leads to something good. Three, feel your feelings. This can be done in any form, but you need to allow yourself to feel and process your feelings until you are done with them, until you basically have no tears left to cry. So journal about it, vent, have a video diary, call a friend to talk to them about it, do your shadow work, just be super expressive with it. You can go like axe throwing. What are those rooms? like destruction rooms where you just break stuff and people go there after they've had a breakup. I think that's a great use of releasing all of your emotional energy. Just allow yourself to feel it so you can be done with it. And just remember that you are allowed to experience negative emotions. You are allowed to feel them. You are allowed to have them. It's part of the human experience. Actually be grateful that you have the capability to take on remorse because there are a lot of people that weren't so lucky in life and are literal narcissists because of what they've been through. And they don't have that part of themselves. They can't feel remorse. And then because of that, their entire futures and their entire relationships with other people are capped and are sacrificed. So be grateful that you can feel it and move on from it. And lastly, the reason we feel shame is because we are prioritizing another person's feelings over our own. Because why are you allowing yourself to stress yourself out like this? And for that reason, your last actionable step is to get on your self-love journey, spend more quality time with yourself, working on your self-perception, which I have an entire episode dedicated to on my podcast, Self Obsessed, which is available on both Apple and Spotify. Everyone has had such good reviews on it. And honestly, your self-image, how you feel about yourself is really gonna be a direct reflection as to how you treat yourself every single day and how you move on from your mistakes. And that brings us to the end of this video i hope you guys enjoyed it and learned something new comment down below let me know what you learned let me know what you're going to be implementing so that you can stay accountable and so that i can see that you're going to start a new journey because of this i will see you guys same time next week for a brand new video i appreciate you bye